You had 500 stones and I guess the speaker's code in Newberry. Great, great work as always. Uh, at the end of this, we're gonna record all of them and put them onto a uh, an album, an it's eight be, track. It's it's gonna be a medley, uh, but it's 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 like the long one, but not as good. Right, exactly, not as good. Uh, <laughs> but Brooklyn, we are back. Uh, I forgot what episode number this is because I'm a professional. Episode eight. This episode is episode eight. eight. Yeah. We are a DIY show. <laughs> so, um, but we have a special guest today. Uh, we've been wanting this man on for a while. He is the most opinionated man on the internet. One, Cody Newberry. <laughs> How that, you doing? That, that's a very valid point. Um, I've looked over this list a lot. Um, this is absolute hot garbage from start to finish. I could have been on every episode, but I could don't have that much time to just... Rolling Stone should just shut down after this list came out. <laughs> By the way, up at the top, it says episode eight. I don't know how to do your show, but there it is. And Brooklyn, I heard Brooklyn say Elvis was overrated last episode with Chance, and I wanted to shoot myself in the face. So <laughs> this is going to be a great 25 songs. Let's let's have a lot of fun. Oh, boy. Uh, so here's, a, here, here's something special uh, that Brooklyn and I have decided to do. Uh, we I randomly spun a wheel with the numbers in uh, this episode that we're going to cover. And when those songs come up, Brooklyn and I are going to decide, before Cody gives his opinion, is this a Cody song or is this not a Cody song? <laughs> so uh, let's see how this turns out. I've so, listened to this playlist on repeat for the last, since you sent it to me. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty ready to skip some of these i'm promising you that <laughs> okay well this is gonna be fun uh so i forgot to do this last time but um we left off at number 326 which was rilo kiley's portions for foxes uh cody do you even you know this song? Send, you did not send that to me no not, <laughs> okay. not on my list well uh it's number 326 so i just assumed that everyone knows it uh, moving on to number 325 to start off this episode is Iggy Pop's Lust for Life. I really like this song a lot, but boy, do me people misinterpret what this song is about. I have seen this song used in so many movies where it's just like, they're super busy and they're running around the hospital and it's like, a, and things like that. Or it's like, just like, they're all, like having a drive and like. It's exciting and action. Yeah, this song's about heroin. This song is about your life spiraling out of control because of heroin. Uh, so maybe let's not use it as a walk into your wedding. How about that, Kyle? Good idea. Um, but I really do like this song a lot. It's got a great propulsive drive to it. The instrumentation is what sells this song. Those drums and that guitar are really great. It, as I said, it's propulsive, it's just energetic, it's electric, uh, and then when you combine it with the dichotomy of the lyrics, it's actually really, really unique and interesting. Uh, Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, no, this song is really cool. Going through this, going through this list, like of the of the songs, like at the start of the show, this is probably like the best of those ones. Because um, for the most part, this for the most part, this is a two chord song. Um, they don't really change a lot. Like, I think it's just in a chorus, they add in, like, a G, a D, and then, like, a, they just kind of round everything out. Um, but this is a style that is still... Th this is <laughs> this is a style that is still quite prominent. Um, uh, and, like, the, the most... The recent example that, that comes up to mind is uh, Jets, Are You Gonna Be My Girl? has a very similar sort of... Uh, so, similar sort of chord progression. Lyr lyrically, not, not the same, but, like... Um, oh, yeah, this is um, way better. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I see that. Cody. Are you, are you guys ready to say if this is a song of mine or I'm going to just rip? No, nope, not this one. It? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, so this movie, this song, one, I don't know who Kyle is and who he walks down the aisle to, but if this is your song to walk down the aisle to, probably shouldn't be married. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, 
So I'm kind of weird in this song is I've heard the song like all my life, but the problem is what I think is, and this is weird for me because I'm not this kind of person that listens to it. I think like the, the instruments throughout it is better than the words or anything else because he sounds like he's on heroin and he sounds like he's mumbling through it. Like he's near the end, like of his bend. I'm guessing, I'm not sure, but that's what it feels like. I'm not a big Iggy pop. I guess if you're a lover of his music, I just haven't like, you know, found it. But overall, I thought the movies, like I've heard in a ton of movies and stuff like that. I think it works, but I mean, 325, I've seen some of the stuff that you have, you have passed up already. And I'm like, Oh, it could it could be in the four hundreds, you know. It could be in the four fifties, you know. But uh, yeah, not a bad song, but just not something I would listen to daily. No. Honestly, hearing or, Cody say it's not a bad song means it deserves a spot on this list. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. All right, so we're gonna move on to number four, tw- uh, three twenty four, Billy Joel's scenes from an Italian restaurant, and I'm gonna let Cody start with this one. This is just fucking stupid. Like three twenty four, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. You can I could name you. There's maybe twenty songs that tops this song in my list. It's not my top Billy Joel. Even it's not my top. It's not Vienna. Like I think Vienna's still like the tops for me. I, I think there's something about Vienna that I just absolutely love. But scenes from Italian restaurant. There are there are idiots out there. There are absolute jackasses that I've talked to about this song that think, oh, it's so boring. Bottle of red. Bottle. I said, did you get past the minute mark? If you didn't get past the minute mark, the whole song changes. The entire thing changes. Like, it is absolutely, like, this entire, right? I still think they could, like, make, like, a movie based on the scenes from Italian Restaurant of, like, where it goes and trips it. It's crazy. This song is absolutely, it's his favorite song. To see it on 324, to know what is, like, above it, to, you know, lower on the list, kiss my ass. Like, I am, (laughs) I listened to these songs this week, and I am so angry. I've literally put this on the repeat. Like I've listened to scenes from Italian restaurant twice. And then I listened to the rest of everything about once because this song deserves way more credit. It's insane. It's absolutely crazy that this is three twenty four. What if I told you, and I having not seen the list. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> what? I'm a very, how many, how many times are we going to keep that bit on for the rest of the episodes? This is crazy. The rest of the episodes. Yes. Okay. Um, what if I told you this is the only Billy Joel on the entire list? It's kind of the shocking part of this. What? So what are your so, thoughts? <laughs> oh, sorry, mine? Oh, sorry. I kind of cut out quite a, quite, a, quite a bit there. Um, but yeah, no, this song this song is incredible. Um, but uh, what I wanted to what I wanted to highlight in this song is that um, during this time, Billy Joel was actually changing um, saxophone. Um, uh, main saxophone guys, because uh, I would like in this song in particular, you got a lot, you got a lot of those. Um, in terms of like, I think there's like alto sax. Uh, there's even like there's a, a weird sort of like clarinet sax that's that's like, really high up in that first transition. Um, but I agree with Cody. This would make a really interesting movie, and he does a really good job of just kind of painting the picture of like I, I believe this is written about his parents um, and like how they, and like how they met, um, how they met and whatnot. Um, Richie Kanata, I believe, is I believe was the person that started out, and he did a lot of he did the solos for like um, New York State of Mind. Um, but then it was Mark Rivera that came over that that took over, and I believe he's the person that did that made, did all the saxophone work. Um, so for even for like kind of a replacement member to be that prolific in his catalog is is quite quite cool. I have to say something. I am sorry. You you started and you just sent it to Brooklyn. I know there's five minutes per song, but kiss my ass. Listen, <laughs> for this to be the only one is just a like I would understand Piano Man Wait. being like in the top like two hundreds because like Piano Man like people would still say that's his best song of all time. For it not to even make the list, what are did they just roll a dice and say this from the seventies, this from the sixties, this from this era? Like they had to touch on everything to seem hip and cool because they're idiots. Rolling Stone should not have a job. Like I don't know who this person <laughs> who made this list. The whole the whole team shoot them. Dead. <laughs> uh, a lot of people voted, including people like Art Garfunkel uh, and AJR. I don't know who the fuck they are, but I don't like them. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I love this song. Billy Joel is my number three artist of all time. Uh, this song is absolutely incredible. Just the way that he details the characters, just 
are perfect. You know exactly who these people are just from the lyrics of this song. And it's just the way that it's crafted. It's just such a perfect three act story of a song. And yeah, I, this, I don't understand why it's in the three hundreds. I, I mean, if it was in the low one hundreds, I would probably understand, but yeah, this is kind of insane. What are your other two? I'm just curious. Uh, number two is Elton John. Number one is Peter Gabriel. So Peter, you're muted, Brooklyn. I get your shit. This is like, <laughs> I was like, how everybody feels on YLS. Holy shit. Yep. All right. Moving on to number three, twenty-three, Everly Brothers. All I have to do is dream. Uh, so Brooklyn, why don't you start off with this? This song fucking sucks. I don't know why it's on here. Um, it's just like, it's one thing, and then they just carry on that one thing, and it's just like this really like slow strum the guitar, and then like dream. Like I get, I get that. There's nothing else added to this. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll go next. Um, so I don't hate this song. I love the Everly Brothers, actually. I wouldn't say that I'm like a huge fan of their work, but they have some songs that are great and should be on this list. This is probably not one of them, to be honest with you. Uh, it sounds pretty. Like, it's got a warm, pretty vibe to it, which the Everly Brothers do really well. And you... They're a group that you can tell who it is when they start singing, but uh, there's just no, there's just nothing to the song that gives it that extra level. So, uh, and with that, before we move on to Cody, uh, this is one of the songs that randomly got spun. Uh, so Brooklyn, you have your board, Freddy. You son of a gun. <laughs> I asked you ahead of time if you were ready for this. Why is he muted? Why is I don't know why he's he muted. Doing? I just keep muting myself every time. But uh, yeah, no, you can just go to me first. Okay, for the audio listeners, it'll be kind of a secret. Is this a Cody song or not? Not at all. This is oh. not a Cody song. No. Cody? Okay, so 324 is Scenes from Italian Rex Restaurant. And then Scene 323 is a grandparent song. Like... You, we're all in the same age group almost. We all remember those songs that our grandparents play around their house that was like, oh, that seems fine. But if I heard this like driving down the road, I would throw myself out of the vehicle. <laughs> this song does nothing. I, and you can't even you can't even fall asleep to this movie and start dreaming in the song because all they do is fucking repeat the same thing. The entire dream, 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 dream. What okay, cool. What else is there? You're telling me scenes is 24? This is 23? Who made that decision, jackass? Like, this is stupid. It's uh, so boring and monotonous. I don't understand. Like, there's, music, there's songs in here that was like, I understand you're right, age group that has nostalgia. This? The people that listen to this cruising down the street are dead. They're probably <laughs> dead now. They don't, they can't vote. This is stupid. <laughs> Uh, I will say that I've never heard a song use the phrase "gee whiz" and be oh. completely earnest with it. So yeah, I'll right. give it credit for that and that alone. <laughs> but with that being said, we are going to move on to number three twenty-two after the Gold Rush by Neil Young. Uh, Cody, your thoughts? This song sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is one that I was just like, this thing, he's terrible. He is absolutely god awful. If this this is one of those singers that people like, I'm sorry, but I listened to this and I had to stop my car and like look <laughs> down and be like, who is singing right now? I under, I've heard Neil Young my entire life. I've heard people talk about him. I've heard people I think my dad praised him at some point. Oh God, I guess I just never paid attention. Like who oh, like I think if I was completely Go back 10 years when I was completely hammered off my ass, and I think I still get off the couch to turn off this song. Why is this on here? Is this like, I don't know Neil Young. You'll have to correct me, but is this like somebody's pop? Do people love, is this his top song of all time? Like, is this oh, No, I would like, um, actually, can I Old Man, uh, I would say 
Brooklyn, yeah, go ahead. A lot of Neil Young fans have this as their number one or within top three. Like, this comes up quite a bit, and it's, like, kind of objectively – I, I don't agree with this, but if somebody has a number one, it, it makes sense. Um, but yeah. Yeah, he has like other songs like Old Man uh, and Southern Man. Um, and uh, um, Southern Man is technically, wouldn't that be Crosby Stills actually no? Oh, it probably is. I can't, uh, whatever. It's still Neil Young. Um, he also has uh, Keep On Rocking in the Free World. Uh, like, yeah. Like, he's. He, as I said before, we have talked about Neil Young before on this show. And oh, he, as I oh, said, he has more than one song? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, right. Multiple. Go. Multiple songs. Oh, so we found who their <laughs> fan base is, morons. <laughs> um, but as I said the last time, Neil Young is very hit and miss for me. I really do love the instrumentation on this song. I love the production. The horns on this song sound absolutely incredible. The piano is beautiful. The melody of the song is fantastic. I love the lyrics. But God, Neil Young sounds terrible on this song. He Thank sounds, you. this is one of those that he, I, I can't listen to his voice. Is he, like, on, is he on heroin too on this? Like, is he through a bender? Because that's I, not, not, not for this track, but oh, a couple okay. others. Oh, no. A couple no. other tracks that kind of make sense. Cowgirl on the sand down by the river. Good. Um, but yeah, I love everything about this song, except for Neil Young. He just doesn't work for me on this one. Brooklyn. This is this is not the Neil Young song to put in here. I would like this is where you start. Um like 322 is perfectly fine, but I would have started with old man. I would have started with old man or um or even like Heart of Gold. I think Heart of Gold is Oh a yeah, Heart of Gold. It's a better one. But like but even for even for this one, because there's because there's another song in his discography that kind of sounds the same and is a lot better, and that's Helpless. Um, it has it's more of a guitar, but it's also in it's in, in the key of D. Doesn't change doesn't change it up a whole lot. I think this is in here because of the instrumentation and the arrangement, and that this is really like American American folk songs where it doesn't really have a chorus. It just has that one rip and it goes back and forth. I admire the kind of tenacity, not, not the tenacity, but the boldness to go with literally just just one piano and a French horn, and that's all you have for instruments. Um, but no, this is not the Neil Young song to put in. Yeah, no, this one's disappointing, honestly. Uh, moving on to number 321, I still haven't found what I'm looking for by U2. And I am so happy that this song is here. This is arguably my favorite U2 song. It is the one where the guitar, like the Edge's guitar on this one, the fluttering guitar, it's just so good. And it just captures you right away. And I love the poetry and the lyrics and Bono's delivery, it's, it's so powerful. This is like peak Bono. This is like when Bono was like really passionate and just like threw himself into everything. And it's just this beautiful sound. I think it was produced by Brian Eno, if I'm not mistaken. I hope I'm not, at least. And Brian Eno is a genius. Because when he can make a band sound... In, he can make any band sound incredible. But especially when he worked with U2. Um, yeah, this song's amazing. Brooklyn. This is a good U2 song. I don't agree with you that this is the best one. I would probably pick Sunday Bloody Sunday or um, or actually uh, the version of one that they do with Mary J. Blige. I think it's their best. I think it's their best song. Um, in terms of this song in particular, I still have that one I'm looking for. Uh, I think Disturbed actually does a better version. Um, just get, with, get the fuck out. I, get the fuck out. Disturbed I know this is a family have, show, but I know. <laughs> no, um, there's something. It there it, there's something about the mix in this. It's just there. It's it's missing something. And I think with Disturbed's version, there's a more drums mix in, so you get that nice like booming, booming sort of sound. And I think that fits so well in the chorus. And like you see, like you see when this song gets used in movies, uh, like in Sync Two, they kind of go over that same sort of vibe. And I don't know if U Two carries that same sort of. Uh, same sort of tone. That's disturbed. All right, Brooklyn, I love you, but no, you're in timeout. Uh, Cody. 
Disturbed. They all sound the same. That's my favorite. That's <laughs> one of the bands I never thought would come back up in my life. Um, I'm still mad at you two. I'm still mad at you two for a long time. What did we um, do? You're not a part of you two, buddy, because if not, you wouldn't be having that small poster of whatever it is behind you. You'd be in the, having a bigger poster. Okay. Um, that was no, an they actual put, album, sir. They, they put all that, that album on all the iPhones, and I hated oh, it because... Yeah. And I don't even listen to music, but every time we like click something, it'd play like a song from it. I can't. I, I hate it. I'm so mad. Uh, this song's fine. This song's okay. I I don't. I'm not a huge like U2 fan. It's like sounds like all the other like songs like that U2 would do. I I guess it would be better. I don't. Know. I haven't heard Disturbed in a long time, so I can't really say that Disturbed is a better version of this. But uh, I'm gonna go with no on that. So yeah, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Shouldn't be this high. I guarantee that. Oh, hold on now. I and disagree. S- scenes from Italian restaurant is uh, 324. That's the measuring stick now. Buddy. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I Would I pick this over scenes? This is about to be, a, you said this is about to be a child, a child-friendly show. I'm about to <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going to say no, but it's close, actually, to me. Moving on. <laughs> To number 320, California Love by Tupac. Uh, I will let Brooklyn go first. One of the best beats by Dr. Dre. One of the best intros by Dr. One of the best intros by Do- Dr. Dre. Love you, love you bud. No, 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 actually, something under the Wild Wild West. But, um, but yeah, uh, the hook in this is great. Uh, I think the way Tupac works, works around that um, is, is great. The the effect in the chorus um and just kind of like it they set up this like dystopian sort of sort of vibe with it i guess and i don't I, i'm sure the music video kind of kind of helps with that because it's kind of like in that wasteland sort of setting um but no this is this is a great sort of like club, great sort of club banger um the highlight i guess in the song i like the way that, that this ends um I, for, I forget who it i forget who it is but like when they're just repeating on like shake shake it baby and they just and they just keep going off of that and they just slowly slowly fade out uh, but yeah cody oh this is this song's great um i the intro to it is always like one of those i just it's just straight bob like every time in my whitest way possible <laughs> um it's a bob um yeah i i enjoy it through and through i don't listen to it like as much but i'm never one like if it comes on I'm like oh, like, oh no i'm i'll listen to the whole thing through it just never like finds my way on playlist um but again this is one that's on the list that makes perfect sense like it's okay to be there i understand why this one made it there dream 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 still don't understand it so like this one yeah. tupac arguably one of the best rappers uh, ever taken way too oh, soon yeah so. Yeah, yeah and, Tupac. And dry, so. Yeah, Tupac is arguably top ten, like of all time. Um, and it, because the thing that Tupac has, not only was he a really good lyricist, but just the way that he will throw himself into a song, like his delivery is impeccable. Like he's got so much charisma to him that it's utterly infectious. And this is the perfect kind of song for that because it's like this big party jam. It's like inviting the entire state of California to like, just like, you know, party. Um, but yeah, it. this is a great song. This is one of Dre's best beats ever. It's just the horns are perfectly placed in the mix. Uh, it's propulsive, it's fun, it's energetic. It gets you. It just like it gets you and it hooks on and it doesn't let go for like I think it's, it's like the people five going. minutes. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I'm happy it's on here. I think this might be a little low for this song. Actually. That's actually true. I, I'm, I mean, yeah. if, you're, if you're gonna include like a hip hop song, which I don't expect much, but again, I could expect that only one Billy Joel. Um, this is kind of like I would consider like top tier so it's kind of weird that it's a 320 what like what do you include especially there's a song in this list that's coming up that's <laughs> what we'll find <laughs> out what that song is uh moving on to number 319 oh there we go 
Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tears for Fears. I'm going to start off with this one. Um, I used to love this song. I thought this was one of the great, like, 80s kind of, like, atmospheric, like, rock songs. And as time's gone by, it's kind of been talked about so much and it's been played so much that it's kind of lost a little bit of its luster for me i still think it's a great song um the vocals are fantastic just the production alone it gives it so much space and energy like atmosphere that i totally understand why people absolutely love this song um i really like it a lot but it's kind of dimmed on me a little bit uh brooklyn I was kind of the opposite, I guess, for you. I like this was kind of in that realm of just like '80s mix of like, oh, this is cool. Um, and then Pablo Moose covered this, and then Weezer put this on their uh, put this on their Teal album for covers. No, it, I forgot it, about that. And it kind of high and it kind of highlighted all the things that I like about this song. The, the things that I love about this, um, is the bass line in particular. The and like, and I think it's that attention to detail, like where they're doing swinging, like swinging eights. Um, and it's just that, st it's just that steady sort of like rock solid thing in the back. Um, but then it's like when they get to, uh, when they get to like the second verse, um, and it's like lines, like walls come, like walls come tumbling down and you get this like boom, bop, bop, like, like this big, like, doo or, like, uh, like these big sort of like two notes, um, throughout, throughout that. And it's, um, this is just really cool. Um, and how it, it's kind of. It can be like spacious, I guess. Spacious, I guess, in a way. Um, but yeah. All right, Brooklyn, you got your board ready? I do have my thumbs ready. Okay. I think this is not a Cody song. I think this actually is a Cody song. Cody? Boy, you're freaking stupid. This is such a bop. Yeah. I'm so on board with this song. I love how it starts off. Like, I love the beat to it where it goes, and then just like. As it picks up, it, it's, it doesn't like actually change like levels. I just like, re-listen to it, but like every time they go into the chorus of it, it's just like yeah. Like I just, it's one of those like feel good songs that I'm just okay with. It's one of these. It's it. Bar's got a new job in this community. He doesn't know it at this point, but like I'm not going to be on every episode, but he's going to have to send me the Spotify list for the next 25, just because I want to continue this journey of just like listening to them as they go. Because it was a great time. Because I don't ever get out of my comfort zone of like music. I get like the same 300 songs and those are my those are the safe lane i stay in them this was a lot of fun i disagree i had fun but like i'm i'm on board to like listen to as this list uh, goes down uh but yeah so much fun uh it's not it doesn't it doesn't overcomplicate it it doesn't make it crazy there's nothing like that stands out like so much but it works for me in that way 319 maybe a little high but i think it deserves a spot somewhere on the list for sure all right, fair enough. Uh, I have been proven wrong. Uh, so, Brooklyn, good for you, I guess. Uh, number 318 is Hound Dog by Big Mama Thornton. Uh, so, yeah, this is the song that Elvis does. Except Big Mama Thornton does it better. I think Big Mama Thornton's delivery in this is just absolutely incredible. She is the reason to listen to this song. There's just like, there's this rich texture in her voice. There's like a warm butteriness, but there's a little graveliness in there as well. And she absolutely knows how to control the room with her vocals. Uh, th there's just something about the way that this is structured that I like better than the Elvis version. Not to say that the Elvis version is bad. I actually... Oh, you can't. I, you can't. Okay, okay, Brooklyn. Uh, but I just think that this version is better. And I... Honestly, I need to do more looking into Big Mama Thornton's work. Because I know that she's a legendary figure that really kind of is the real shape of rock and roll. Her and Chuck Berry. So, I'm glad this is here. Cody. Listen, I will not sit here and allow people to say that Hound Dog from Elvis is not a good song. It's a good song. It works for what it is. 
But there is something about a soulful voice like an Etta James, like a Big Mama Thornton, like even like Diana Ross, Retha Franklin, those ladies that just can convey emotion with just singing a way that no one else can. Like there is a soulfulness in them. Um, and this song, I've heard the song originally, but I haven't like d- dove into Big Mama Thornton's like, like what she's saying. And yeah, it, it, it's two different songs. If you think about it, the Elvis is the Elvis song and the Elvis song works for what the El- Elvis is going for. But this one's like totally different. Like, treating that man like a hound like hound dog and you feel the emotion throughout it i think she's absolutely incredible i i will always go down that lane of just uh finding different uh songs from uh the the original creators of rock and roll back in the day because i think yeah elvis gets the limelight because i mean he was able to take the limelight because back in 53 big mama thornton was not getting stages like elvis would have got back then so she yeah was, there's one you know, big reason for that yeah so like uh so like those are those are the problems that they faced back then but i mean honestly it's if you hear her versions too it's so like raw just sounds like yeah like out of a tin can like it just seems like they were just standing on the back porch singing like so that's it, it worked really well for me. It definitely deserved. Honestly, after hearing it, it kind of deserves to be higher. In my opinion. Yeah, a little bit. I kind of unless agree, unless actually. unless more are coming from other you know soulful singers. All right, Brooklyn. What are your thoughts? And is there a Megadeth cover of this? There is not a mega. There is not a Megadeth cover of this. There isn't a cover of this at all. If you like Led Zeppelin and if you like Robert Plant as much as you do, you need to thank Big Mama Thornton because uh, very much so, Robert kind of stole her, kind of stole her, stole her vocal, her vocal qualities. Um, yeah. you, kind of, you kind of, you kind of, you kind of get that. Um, it's it's a shame that she was that she didn't get as she didn't get a, a bigger push because uh, like looking back at it now she is definitely the influence um, for where rock where rock where rock kind of kind of went. Um, I argue that she's a argue that she's actually a better guitar player than, than Chuck than Chuck Berry, but they're also kind of like at the same. They're also kind of kind of on the on the same level same level in that sense. Um, but just like it's. It's more than just soul that she's that she's putting into it. Like, just it's. I think, yeah, like Cody said, like the the control that that she has that she has on her voice and and how she's able to to, to kind, of, kind of reel it in and kind of save that energy for for the for the for the bigger moments. Um, but yeah, yeah. So one of the most influential songs of all time uh, in the history of rock and roll, number three eighteen. Number three seventeen is "Visions of Joanna" by Bob Dylan. Uh, I'm gonna let Brooklyn start with this one. I fucking love this song, even though in the first 30 seconds, the Bob Dylan haters are like, this, the Bob Dylan haters could say, this just sounds like another Bob Dylan song, and you're kind of right, but, and all, but also, this is a, this is the, like, the jammiest of Bob, of Bob Dylan stuff, like, I've never, and of all the, of all the things, he's never leaned this, leaned this much back into the beat, um, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of like similarities into like what was going on, in, like what was going on in this decade. Because um, whenever I heard this song, I initially wanted to kind of mash it up with, uh, with like Bobby, with like Bobby McGee or like Son of a Preacher Man, um, just kind of those like those more gospel, more gospel sort of uh, sort of pop tunes. Um, but yeah, well, I was I was genuinely surprised at like how much I how much I gravitated. But uh, in terms of like where it is on the list, it's fine. We're probably going to see other Bob Dylan songs much further down. But uh, yeah, good place to start. Yeah, because I think this is the first Bob Dylan song that we've talked about, if I'm not incorrect. I I like this song. I don't love it. I understand why people do. Um, It's kind of got that long song problem that I have where it does change things up more than other songs I have problems with when it comes to being like seven minutes long, but it still does kind of keep the same 
level throughout most of it, even though there are those little nuances. Um, and yeah, I mean, I like it. I, I am a Bob Dylan fan. Um, so I'm okay with it being here. I probably wouldn't have picked it, but I understand why it's here. Cody. All right, move it on. I mean, guys, like, I guess for the time, I guarantee I know what's letter on the little list because it features <coughs> this douchebag per, uh, uh, magazine. Um, so, like, I bet it's going to be high on because they no one likes to stroke their own ego like this group. Um, but um, but I, it was <laughs> it was fine. My favorite interview ever is like I, I know this is weird for most people. My one of my favorite uh, my favorite artists of all time is Garth Brooks, is a country singer, and he had to cover "Make You Feel My Love." And when oh. he pulled for the Oscars, and he had to pull he pulled they all did a random draw, and he got to pull Bob Dylan, and he listened to Bob Dylan sing. And it's like, what the hell's he saying? There was a lot of lyrics you could just look up back then. You had to like go and like, describe what they mean. So like, the man's just, it's fine, but guys, like, <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. He's mushmouth from Fat Albert. Look, guys. Look, guys. <laughs> wow. The episode was on at the end of Fabianus. Okay, well, uh, Hopefully we don't talk about Bob Dylan with uh, Cody again this episode. Uh, number 316, The Leader of the Pack by the Shangri-Las. I'm going to go first. So of the girl groups from this era, this group was known as the tough group. These were the bad girls. And I'm going to be honest. This song is the music equivalent of a B movie. And I'm kind of here for it. I kind of love I kind of love it. Uh the the acting at the beginning of the song when the girls are talking to each other, atrocious. Like, hey, look, there she is right now. Hey, are you still seeing that guy? Yeah, I like that uh but there's just something about the commitment to these lyrics and just the it is it is super catchy. It is catchy. Um and I have a blast every time I listen to it. I really do love this song, even if the down, down if the backing vocals are the driest things ever. <laughs> Uh, it's cheesy. It's so cheesy, but I love it. Cody. I mean, at the beginning of the song, it's basically acting from a softcore porno. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I've, seen, I've seen better acting from it. The only part of the song, like, I'm like, I'm here for is like, fell for the leader of the pack and then nothing else happens. Why is this here? Like, this is the weirdest <laughs> song possible. This is another moment. Looked at Blind, just started listening to the playlist, and then stopped and said, um, <laughs> California Love, not as good as Leader of the Pack, apparently. Like, again, the people that cruise the street of this, probably not with us anymore. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, why are they voting? Well, because it's Pudding Day on Tuesday, so <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn. Um, yeah, it, I gotta hear this for I, I, I the, the thing that I'll remember about this song is the jingle, just the leader of the pack, and then you just hear that vroom vroom, and it's it, it's good in that sense by because by by the end of the chorus, you know what this song is about. It's like oh, it's about one of them being uh, da- dating uh, dating the 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 leader of a, of a motorcycle gang. Um, but how this made it over? Uh, wait a um, wait a minute, Mister Postman, which is a which is a much better song. Um, yeah, no, don't understand. Yeah, I agree that Miss Please, Mister Postman, is the better song. I totally agree with that. I- I'm gonna listen to Leader of the Pack more because it's just 
It's, it's a so Tammy, and the, Tammy and the T Rex of songs. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, number three fifteen. Uh, you got to get accustomed to freeform jazz. Uh, we've got John Coltrane Part One acknowledgement from the album A Love Supreme. Uh, I'm going to start with Cody. <laughs> Don't start with me on this. I'm not. I, I'm not I know playing. how much you love jazz. I'm not. Like jazz. Can I? Can I? Can I actually go first on this one? Because no, I. Sure. Sure. I'm not following sure. the bar's trap. On no, this. because we haven't. Uh, no, because like we haven't. We haven't talked about freeform jazz since the very first episode. Uh, so this was very refreshing to kind of hear in the list and be and be like, oh yeah, we're going back here. Um, uh, when upon initially listening to this, listening to this song. Uh, it is not an easy. It is not an easy listen. It's going to take you three or four minutes to kind of figure out where you're at, um, because it can come off as really jumbled, um, and especially like whenever the drums, like whenever the drum kit comes in, because he's just kind of riding. He's, he's kind of on the ride symbol, um, and whenever uh, whenever John comes in with a saxophone, it can kind of sound a little bit sporadic. Um, and this this is actually what leads me to say. Um, for these sort of songs, they're actually kind of best if you hear them, if you see it live. Um, and the only reason that I say that is, is that I think you get a better sense of like the beast and the rhythm, um, just because like you, you kind of get to see um, all the musicians kind of kind of getting getting into that into that groove. Um, and then if you listen, if you listen off of that, and then have like the saxophone come in, it doesn't sound as jarring. Um, but I could totally, I could totally understand like that, that this isn't isn't like Cody's jam or something. But um, from a pure musicianship standpoint, this is incredible. I will go next. Um, I friggin' love this piece. It is controlled chaos. It is controlled chaos in jazz form, and I am here for it. It is meticulously planned even though it sounds like it is completely improvised and just the utter dynamics between the bass and the trumpet and the saxophone, just the whole cohesive unit working as one, building this incredible sound is just so perfect. The only pro the only thing I have with the song that I'm not that big of a fan of is when they start coming in with the vocals not as good as just the instrumentation it's still great but it kind of does take away from the, the strength of the song um but yeah i freaking love this cody you like jazz is he dragging or rushing um i'm not sure but let me tell you um not for me it's not for me um i am it's kind of like foreign films um and i'm trying to get better on it i am but i don't i don't come out of my comfort zone much for especially music like I, want, I like the sing-along stuff, and I know that's the same reason I don't like silent movies. You're going to have to talk to me, you know? You're going to have to keep me entertained. I have the attention span of a newt. So um, <laughs> when it played, I let the whole thing play, and I stopped, and I said, that didn't have any words. What? California Love had words. Well, I'm not, so, um, I, I, is, he, is it talented? Absolutely. Couldn't do it a billion years. Is it 315 a list? Possibly for, this makes, for somebody that makes, I can understand why somebody loves it, especially people that play instruments and have that talent and stuff. So, so that makes sense. For me, never probably going to listen to it again, but respect it for people for the ability to play it. And controlled chaos, I guess. It just sounded like they were playing instruments to me, but you know. Fair enough. With that, we're going to move on to number 314. Number three, I, wanna, I, I want Cody. I want Cody to revisit this song like three years from now and see if he has the same sort of opinion. Yeah, because I, you, I used to have this because I was the same way, and then I smartened up. <laughs> Did Brooklyn just call you dumb? No, I'm calling me. I'm calling past me dumb, and then I got smart. Oh, it's just, it's, but no, it's it's the same thing. If you watch a movie like a coming of age story or like a a father like and have a kid or something changes in your life and oh, you revisit yeah. that movie that movie hits way harder for you now that you're in this site like there's a movie from this year come on come on it's not going to hit for everybody but if you have a kid in 10 years and you watch that movie in 10 years you're gonna be like holy crap this is this is nuts 
it just it hits people different. This me this this song could definitely hit me, you know, when I'm sitting in my rocking chair, old as shit. Just tired. What about, like, oh. what about Titan? What Titan age like that? Okay. No, because there's still no plot. <laughs> uh okay. So I guess moving on. Question mark? Uh to number three fourteen, the Stooges, I wanna be your dog. Cody, what are your thoughts? Um it's okay. I'm not in love with the song. I, I'm just so confused. I guess there's been a lot of songs over the years. And a lot of songs. And I'm not Am I an indie song find, like person that likes to find stuff? But I, I this song never registered with me before. Like you sent me this list, I never heard it before. So it's kind of like it's kind of weird that it just sits here at three fourteen. Apparently, you know, probably one weirdo in the office at Rolling Stone had this at number one, and it just cut down to three fourteen and dropped. I don't know how it all worked, but I'm interested to see what you guys think about it. It's not like it wasn't like an automatic hit for me, but maybe I missed something. Brooklyn, was it an automatic hit for you? Uh, it is an automatic hit, but I think it's more so for the time that it came out and who it, who it would eventually inspire. Because the first time that I heard this song, I I thought to myself, a five-year-old Jack White is probably listening to this and is like, oh, so this is what Garage Rock is. Um, so like you get that influence from like them and like Queens of the Stone Age are kind of going going for the same thing. Uh, Nirvana took a lot of took a lot of influence from this. Um, and just kind of that chuggy sort of chuggy sort of riff. Um, it's not doing a ton um, in terms of like venturing out in the genre, but it's fine. Uh, I actually love this song a lot. It's got a great electric energy to it. Those chunky guitar riffs really add a lot of atmosphere and tension to it. What I really love the most about this song, though, is the sleigh bells. The use of sleigh bells in this song is brilliant. I don't know whose idea that was, but give them all the money that this song has ever made. Because it just really adds that extra element that this song needs. It's also only three minutes. So even with it being kind of like the same kind of level throughout the entire song, because it's so short, it works fine. I love this song, actually. So I get why people wouldn't, but it it's just like a, a great driving song. Like, I will play this song when I am driving anywhere. But with that being said, we're going to move on to 313, which is Tears of a Clown by Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. I will go first on this one. This is one of my favorite songs. I friggin' love Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. And I think the thing that really helps this song a lot is not only Smokey Robinson's beautiful vocals, not only is it the incredibly sticky melody, especially that chorus, but it is the instrumentation. The instrumentation and the production on this song is super tight. The drums are perfect. I think it's an oboe. Maybe, or a flute. I think it may be a flute, actually, now that I think about it. It's just the perfect little flourish to play throughout this song. And just lyrically speaking, it is incredibly well written. Like, I didn't know who Paiachi was until this, uh, until like later on in life. But once I knew who he was and I listened to this song again, those lyrics really clicked. So I love this song. I am really sad it's this low on the list. Uh, Brooklyn. Yeah, I think it's a, it's it's either a flute or flute or a piccolo. Um, but a lot of that, a, um, a lot of those woodwind instruments kind of got kind of got used uh, for this for this genre. Um, take everything that you said, Andrew, about lust for life and like the dichotomy of those of that song, and take and uh, apply it to this and dial it up to eleven. Because the, if you if you look at just if you look at this just for like the musical for the music backing it's very like up like uplifting so like very uplifting sort of piece and then it talks about this like really sad clown and like no matter how happy you can't like no matter how happy we try to be we're like 
like it's going to be it's going to be sad. It's it's not fully my jam, but I think this is I think I think after a couple more li- listens, I'll be able to kind of figure out figure out what it is what it is that I like about it. But like I I appreciate this song for like just how out there it is. Cody, don't disappoint me like Brooklyn just did. I love this song. Like this song just went straight up uh, after hearing um, hearing it. Um, I've always liked Smokey Robinson's voice. Like it's it's very soft, but it's it's soulful at the same time, so it works for me. And then I listened to it the first time too, and I was like, "That's hey, good." And then I was like, "What the hell?" Tears of the This is a, like the lyrics were weird overall. Like for me, like it didn't work the first time, but the more and more it came through on the playlist, it worked more and more. So, no, really enjoyed it. Uh, great choice, I think, on the list. I think, I think especially like Smokey Robinson, Motown, like they definitely need to be represented on this list because, I mean, Motown is such like a building block in music history, at least what I know of them. So, yeah, absolutely, good choice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're uh, not total idiots, you know. Well, I mean, this song is co-written by Stevie Wonder as well. So when you have Smokey Robinson working with Stevie Wonder, I think the magic's bound to happen somewhere. That's true. And with that, 312 is Walk On By by Isaac Hayes, chef himself. Uh, Brooklyn, let's have you start with this one. Uh, this song is cool. Um, I appreciate appreciate like the thing there like the sound the sounds in it and kind of where um where people were draw draw influence um the person that immediately comes to mind is prince uh kind of took kind of took a lot of the sound um one thing i will say this is a fucking long song this is 12 minutes um and it kind of overstays its welcome in terms of like i i think so i think for i think if you're going this length you almost you need like another section or something, um, and it just I don't know if you can carry that same sound for this long, and especially when we're gonna when we're getting into like we're getting into the I, even though it's even though we're, we're only three hundreds like we're getting into really good songs, and I like I would I think this is ultimately a little bit too high considering songs that have come up uh, pretty recently. Um, but it's good. Cody. I see side one on that record, and I think that's this entire song. Like, holy <laughs> shit, long in the tooth is an understatement for this song. I was just like, oh, we're on to like the we're on to like the fourth song that nope, it's still here. We're still sticking around. I don't think it's that great, to be honest with you. See, my thing is you gotta earn my time. In movies, if you're over two hours, like you got to make it worth my time to be there. In music, you got to play like you got to be catchy enough for over five minutes almost. This one doesn't do it for me. Don't understand it. Um, yeah, so it doesn't do it for me. I understand for some people, but me. No. I guess I'm on the island this time. I friggin' love this piece. As I said, with like songs that are yes. <laughs> as i said with songs that go past six minutes you have to change it up every once in a while to keep my attention i think this does that i think this breaks into sections beautifully because i love the 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 atmospheric kind of like darkness at the beginning then like the smooth soulfulness as it builds into this incredible electric guitar um this is one of those songs that I think it's sampled a lot. I'm pretty sure Childish Gambino has sampled this song. Um, I just think that this song is incredibly crafted. I, 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 of the three of us, I love this song. I think this song breezes by personally, um, but you know, I guess I'm wrong this time, so I can accept that. Sure. But with that, we're going to move on to number three eleven. Hotel California by right. the Eagles. I so uh, I will let Brooklyn go first. Okay. Um. So yeah, this is uh like top five songs ever for me. Um. A, a lot of times it's my favorite song. Um. Uh. Eagles were uh were 
uh, very big with my parents. Um, so, so I spent a lot of time listening to the very best of Eagles album um, in the car. Um, this was one of the first bass lines that I tried that I tried to learn. Uh, I think it's yeah. I think this would have been yeah. Randy Meisner uh, was still the bass at the time. Um, he does really he, he does a really cool lick with like with arpeggios. Um, this song in particular, this song in general. Um, one of the at the best chord structure ever. Uh, if I can, I'm just gonna kind of go through all the all the chords because it goes uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven different chords in this, um, and it all fits so well. Um, one of the other great things in this, obviously, like the guitar solo, uh, Don Felder and Joe Walsh just go back and forth, and then the, how they come how they come together. Um, you would kind of see that later on, and actually, you see it a lot more in metal. Um, one of the cool, one of the fun little tidbits about this song, uh, this was originally supposed to be an E, mi an e minor, but how it would have played out on the guitar is it would have played like a more, a more like Latin sort of style. Um, but with Don, um, but with Don Henley, they got to this and it's like, this is really high. Can we try, can we transpose it? And then they got, to, then they got down to eventually B flat, or not B flat, um, B minor. Um, but yeah, um, one of the only lyrics that I would ever consider getting tattooed on me. Uh, you can check it anytime you like, but you can never leave. Yeah, uh, I really like this song a lot. It's not my favorite Eagle song, though, to be completely honest. It's in my top five, absolutely, but not the one I would pick personally. Um, but that opening guitar is just so iconic. And when you lead into the actual vocals, you hit that drum, and it is like the perfect introduction, and it just like rockets you into the rest of the song. But the thing that really makes the song work are the lyrics. These are some of the best crafted lyrics you will ever hear because it just sets a world up so incredibly well. Like the the uh, the idea of um what was it? Carnitas, Kalitas, like uh, the smell but um, well, the smell of Kalitas rising up in the air. Yeah, the smell of Kalitas rising up through the air on a dark desert highway, cool wind in my hair, like perfect, incredible lyricism. So I I think it absolutely deserves to be on this list. I'm surprised it's not higher, to be completely honest with you. Cody. Oh, you want to say it with me? Rolling Stones are a bunch of idiots. Well, that's fair enough. Um, listen, like, Elton John, um, I know it's for Elton John, Garth Brooks, uh, Billy Joel, Eagles, like, Queen, like, building blocks for my music. Like, Absolutely, no question about it. Uh, I think I compare, especially me in Brooklyn. Uh, parents just, uh, I don't. I think I heard the greatest hits from the Eagles my entire life growing up. Like there was, I could tell you everything about Tequila Sunrise before I could tell you anything about anything from my own, <laughs> my own <laughs> thing. So, um, is Hotel California my favorite song from the Eagles? No, my favorite is Desperado. It will always be Desperado, yeah. but. The fact that this song is here, because it's it's almost like Piano Man. If you tell me the Piano Man's the best Billy Joel song, I'm not going to argue with you. I understand. Same thing with Hotel California. Arguably, probably is the best Eagle song. No question about it. Everything that's in this song, everything that's wrapped up in the song, the lyricism is the best probably in any Eagle song ever. The how the song builds throughout it is just incredible. The fact that it's three eleven. <laughs> You're a joke. You're an absolute clown show because I'm telling you, I've seen at least what's coming on the bottom of this list, and that's stupidity to me. This song could be like if you elected like songs into the like Hall of Fame, like this is easily a first ballot Hall of Famer. Like question, no question at it's automatically in there. Like you could play the start of the song, everybody knows exactly what this song is as soon as you play the song. I could play you a lot of the songs on here. Leader of the pack ain't there. I promise you there. You know, like there's stuff at the lower of this, not even close. So crazy that I'm here on this list that seems from Italian restaurant and the Eagles are here and just stop here, like what? with other stuff to follow. What it is feels like, it feels like only yesterday that the three of us were on a call to do the top ten Eagle songs for a channel way back when. Yeah. First time I ever talked to Cody. Uh, and what if I said 
theoretically speaking, because once again, I don't know this list. Uh, if this is the only Eagles song on the list. Wow. I mean, wow. That's fair. There's only one, I think there's only one other song that I would put. Yeah, I mean, in. yeah. So you're telling me right now, so Scene from Italian Restaurant arguably is Joel's favorite song. But to say that's the only one, that's kind of ridiculous to me because Piano Man sitting there, Vienna sitting there, like those are like quintessential, like top Billy Joel songs. Fans of Joel like scenes, not everybody else. But when you talk about Eagles, it would be kind of ludicrous, even though I think Desperado is better or Life in the Fast Lane. Like those songs are fun, yeah. but to say it's better than Hotel is insanity on a list of your ranking stuff. So, like, no way. Like that makes sense, but now that's that's stupid that the Eagles are at three eleven because the Eagles are arguably one of the top ten bands of all time, in my opinion. Like I think they're insane. All I right. know I also know there's a I also know there's a lot of people like in the generation before us that hate the Eagles with like a fiery passion, similar to like how some of our generation hates like Guns N' Roses or like Nickelback. Wait, Guns and Rope? What? Okay. Moving on. It turned I have at some point. It turned at some point. Yeah. Uh, the Doors Light My Fire. I'm going to have Cody start off with this one. I mean, again, now we're at the measuring block here. Like, fine. Like, I've heard the... Like, do I ever... I What was it last episode? There was a song that you guys talked about by Zombie? The Zombies, yeah. Yeah, I can't think of the song. But time like, of the season. Time of the season, which oh yeah, insane song. Love that song. Um, but we are like, I think you, Andrew said that this is what the Doors wanted to be, or like, were like, wish they could be, make, wish they could be at that point. And I, I, I was like, whoa, that's a bold take to say. But like, I looking back, I don't listen to a lot of Doors music, but listening to this song, I'm like. Andrew, you got a point there. Like, I see where you're going there. I see the, the outline. Because, like, that song is better than this song from The Doors. And I, Doors are more respected than especially Zombie, you know, like music. So, I think, I don't know how much hit Zombie says, but it's fine. They like, like, two that people I've heard, know I've heard, I've heard the beat, and, like, I've heard the, the, the Light My Fire. Like, it's fine, but nothing I'm going to. And... Somebody there made this graphic and created this little ranking stuff and put literally typed in Hotel California and then had to type in Light My Fire right after. I hope they lit on fire right, right after. <laughs> Busted. Like, you know, dead. They hit the last E in fire and just <laughs> went straight up. Brooklyn. Uh, this is not the door song to put on this list. Uh, if there were two, if there were two door songs that I'd put put before here, uh, it would be "Love Me Two Times" or uh, "Riders of the Storm." I think is my favorite door song. Um, but um, this song in particular is really interesting because if you go back to like I think it was 2011, there was a time in the music industry where they were like, "We're not really sure what we're going to do in terms of like progression." So they went to they they were doing a lot of like genre mashups, but with like dubstep. Um, and Skrillex did a did like a kind of like a mashup. Uh, I think it was like breaking a sweat and this song, "Come on, come on, come on, baby, let my fire." Um, and it's awful. Um, it's <clears throat> so I just, I just kind of instantly go back to that. What's cool though is that is that um, is that Van Morrison kind of predicts EDM in a sense of like how um, it's like you know there's going to be tapes and going to be tapes and loops and whatnot. So he was a he was kind of he was a forward thinker for as as for as crazy as he was as, in a way being at the Twenty Seven Club. Um, but yeah, you mean Dorsey Fine? But they had better. You mean Jim Morrison? Sorry, Jim Morrison, not <laughs> Dan Van Morrison. That is an entirely different person. Yeah, a t an entirely better artist. Um, I have said this before. I think the Doors are kind of incredibly overrated. I don't think that they're necessarily bad. Like. There are some songs from them that I think are good. Uh, this is one of the ones that I think are good. But here's the thing. I think that whoever was their press agent and convinced the people that Jim Morrison is the poet laureate of a generation slipped something into people's drinks as he was telling them that. 
Um, I think that Jim Morrison is a good vocal artist, but lyricist, uh, he is really not that good of a lyricist. No. So listen to the zombies. Listen to the zombies. That's all I have to say. All right. Listen to the birds. Listen to, yeah, there's a bunch of the bands you listen to. Let's not do, get too crazy. Uh, we'll talk about the birds later. Uh, Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Withers in number 309. Um, I friggin' love this song. I love Bill Withers. Bill Withers has got like one of the greatest voices of all time. He's got this rich denseness to his voice, but it's so, so good. It's very, um, I'm trying to think of the word, but he can tell he can tell a story through his emotions like his delivery is so perfect and the strings in this song holy god the strings in this song add so much rich emotional texture it's just an utterly incredible song the lyrics are good even though they're a little simple but the delivery and the instrumentation and the production really uplift that. So this song is absolutely incredible. Uh, Brooklyn. Uh, this song is great. This song is really good, but I wish we were talking about this list almost like a few years earlier. Um, only because this song kind of got turned into a meme or got used a lot for used got, got used a lot for memes uh, like D eighty five before uh, Seth Seth Everman um, like big YouTube like not big YouTubers but they would kind of like take like take this and kind of use it for humor. Um, this is um, we were talking about it with Amar we're talking about it with Amaro and a little a little bit with Chance um, and that this song needs three notes and you're already and you're right there like eight notes uh, you don't even need the rest of that rest of that riff um and i just like his delivery in this um and it's just like it's really cool and then you get to i think it's like the bridge or something it's like i know i know i know i know and then it's just the way that it builds up and create and creates this tension um yeah no um i did not know a lot of bill withers before i joined even this community in general um and yeah no he's he's really good cody Fucking love this song. Love this song. This is one I sing around the house all the time. Like, and I know, mm -hmm. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, it's so good. Like, uh, it's, again, it's, it's soulful music that will always be, like, a top tier for me. Like, just, it may not be my same favorite artist or, like, songs, but, like, if it's playing, like, I'm, I'm in there. I'm fine with it. Like, honestly, I just wish the song was longer. That's the only problem I have with the song. It's yeah. just it's two minutes. It's like in and out. Like I want the song to go on for a lot longer with a lot more, you know, stuff. So, yeah, uh, great choice on this list. I think that I definitely need think this needs to be represented. Of course, like maybe the rankings are incorrect, but deserves a spot on the list for sure, especially yeah. five hundred of them. And it's just so ahead of its time. This was released in nineteen seventy one. Like, this sounds like it could have been made any, any time after that. Uh, so number three, oh, eight, is Liz Fair's Divorce Song. Uh, Brooklyn, how about you start us off with this? This is a very fun acoustic, uh, acoustic guitar riff, and that's about it. There's, I, for Liz Fair in general, there's uh, there's other artists that I would probably put in this vein, like Cheryl Crow, Amanda, Amanda Marshall, um, and like even I would say probably Alanis Morissette is the grand opus of this style. Um, but no, this is this is in here for um, I think it's like I think it's after the chorus um, and just the yeah and just that riff and how how unique it is and how and how how catchy it is. It's like similar to. Um, if I can kind of kind of compare it, um, it's similar to like John Mellencamp's Pink Houses and how the transition from G to F just for some reason it, it hits it it's much more impactful in that song just because of how it's how it's arranged, um, and I think that's why it's in there to kind of put it as simply as it can. I friggin' love this song actually. 
and I think the strength of this song is the lyrics. The lyrics of these of this song are really good because um, it, it it builds the little details that just kind of pile on to each other to create this rift between the two of them. And um, it's just those little details that just keep the song fresh, interesting, and dynamic. I think Liz Fair is a fantastic singer. And I think just keeping the guitar line really kind of simple uh, in order to push those lyrics up to the front was a smart move. And then the end where the harmonica just randomly comes in, but still really works in this kind of ennui, like, sadness of the situation that they're in. I think this song is brilliant, honestly. Um, but Brooklyn, this is one of the songs that came up on our wheel. Uh, what do you, you think this is a Cody song? No, Cody hates this song. <laughs> yeah, this is not a Cody song. I fucking hate this song. <laughs> I did not have a good time with this song at all. This is the one I skipped a lot of the times. I just didn't have fun with it at all. I just, I understand lyrics, like, but like overall, it just they never like connected whatsoever. And I understand why people would be a fan, but not mine. In three hundred eight, you're nuts. You're absolutely fucking nuts. No, thank you. I guess I'm. Yeah. Well. In that case, you have problems. That's okay. You might say that I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy? Uh, Gnarls Barkley's crazy at number three hundred seven. Brooklyn, start with you. Boom, 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 boom. I don't have a win. Uh, shout out to my brother. Uh, he he's arguably a bigger fan of the song than I am, or just like Gnarls Barkley in general. Um, but shout out, or also shout out to Kick Ass. Uh, probably the song that gave gave this probably the movie that gave this song uh, a, the push that it needed. Um, the person that I think gets forgotten in this is Danger Mouse. Uh, he is the other half of Nels Barkley and is the response. And just the beat and how and how layered it is and just and like all the different things in it, like how how sort of like um like the like like the guitar and the drum and how how stagnant it is and how sharp it is, but then you have the strings come in during the chorus and it's just like it kind of floats you away and it kind of gives it this psychedelic sort of, uh, sort of undertone. Um, and again, and then like you pair that with, with CeeLo, with CeeLo's delivery and the range that he, and the range that he, um, the range that he, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? The range that he shows, uh, why, why I couldn't think of the, think of the word shows. Um, shows. <laughs> yeah, he, he, go, he goes really high in the chorus. Um, but then it's like, uh, he gets to a line. I think it's like I can die when I'm done, and then he gets he hits this really low like well, um, and then it just it sets up it sets up the chorus uh, really really nicely. Um, but yeah, this is one of the greatest of the 2000s. It's kind of dated for that time, but I don't mind that necessarily. I remember when this song came out, and it became like the biggest song in the world. Like I remember people were going like, "Have you heard this song?" And I was in high school at the time. So, of course, I was like, no. But, yeah, no, this song is incredible. And, honestly, everything about this song, like, the strength about the song belonged to Danger Mouse as the producer. Like, so the bass line and the drums and especially that choir that's singing in the background are all mixed and layered perfectly. The layered vocals on CeeLo's voice during the chorus is amazing. The sound in this is epic. There's an epic scale to this, but there's also like a desperation in there. And it's just this crazed, like on purpose, but it's this crazed, desperate song that the stakes are so incredibly high in that it is just this epic, dramatic piece, and it sounds amazing. Um, yeah, but it's it's an absolutely incredible song. Brooklyn, is this a Cody song? Uh, yes, it is. It is a Cody this song. This is absolutely a Cody song. Probably top ten song of 
the, that decade for me. I absolutely love this song. It has always been one of those. I think it's one so catchy, so it plays really well, but it actually is like performed and sung super well as well. So like it has that soul for it. But like as soon as that, doom, 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 I'm like I'm on it. Like let's go. I think it won like something. I think it won like song of the year or whatever when it came out. I don't know what it was, but people I think it won like, song and record of the year if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and it was just. I couldn't agree more with it. I just, there's, there's albums and stuff that goes through, but like looking back through, especially the two thousands, like that was like growing up after being in high school, like Charles Barkley was singing crazy. It was just like, I'm on it. And it just, yeah, it was kind of something different for the time too. Like it didn't feel like it fit with any of the other stuff. Cause like the, the pop punk was on like a super rise at that point. Like, yeah, you just that's when Green Day, you had My Chemical Romance, you had like. That was American bands. Idiot era. Yeah, you had those bands coming up and they were taking over. And like the hip hop was like Nelly and like stuff like that. So it didn't really like hit anything. And this was just like, seemed like it seemed like before it's like too early like it just needs to 2010s or something like it was something completely out of the sort so when i saw this was on the list like i was just like see but this is one of those moments like hotel california scenes from italian restaurant are up there do i consider those two songs better than this one yeah in my eyes but like i'm okay with crazy being here because i think crazy stands out if you say of the 2000s and you pick a bunch of songs crazy is one of those songs that stands out still to this day and you could play it from kids now or even our generation and everybody will enjoy it it works so yeah so, i have no problem with the 307 i honestly wish it was lower like i know that's cr maybe crazy to say but i think it i think it stood the test of like i think it's it's past that point it's what 2006 so it's you know it's it's getting up there almost to that 20 year mark and it still hits i hadn't heard it in a while and it came up on that playlist i'm like yep let's go <laughs> so i have to make a correction um it did not win the grammy it actually okay. lost to it actually lost to not ready to make nice by the dixie chicks so oh wow that's not the song to wow <laughs> anybody actually song? remember that song i'm not ready to make nice uh, i'm not ready to back down because i'm mad as hell and i don't have you mean one of the chicks best song round round. dixie chicks best song one of Sorry, them no. Uh, the chicks, good sir. They're no longer Dixie chicks. Yeah, the chicks. yeah. Do Don't you not, disrespect the chicks? But do not With. do not say that this that song is one of their best. No, I would argue it's one of their best. Uh, number three oh six. If my computer will work with me here, number three oh six is "Chain of Fools" by Aretha Franklin. Uh, Cody, let's have you start with this one. I mean, she's the queen. I mean, I'm. I'm it she is like sorry everybody else hold you, you can thank you can thank almost every fee and if any female artist moving forward you can thank aretha door aretha franklin for busting in the doors basically like she transcended in who she was and made a name for and made a not just a singer a superstar that woman owned a stage more than anything and she was one of those people that didn't own the stage by gimmicks or by pyrotechnics or theatrics she stood on the stage in one spot and sang and people loved her for it honestly i don't know how many will be on here from her i remember looking at the list there is clearly a, a clear bullet number one no question about it like the song that probably is i could play that song in a hundred years and people know exactly what it is um but chain of fools that soul voice, I'm telling you, you're in a bad mood. You're in a angry mood. She can bring you out of it in a heartbeat. She has such a power in her voice that's unmatched. Um, shout out to the movie Respect. Um, it's not overall like the top biopic that it should have been, but tells the story of her. And I think she has so much. She sang from a spot of pure, pure pain and pure like. Um, emotion and it comes out and Chain of Fool is one of those great songs that are kind of underrated from her. I mean, if you think about it, she gets overshined by especially her top hit. I mean, it's probably like 
those top artists that have to sing the same song all the time, you know, like those great songs, but like she gets so, you know, these, these fun ones, it works. 306. I hope she's in it more. I, yeah, I have no doubt that she's in it more. If you don't have like respect or think or like any, any other songs at all from her, this would be insane. Think this would be, cool. yeah. Oh my God. Think is probably my favorite Aretha Franklin song to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah, this song is amazing. Like, it's just perfectly crafted. Especially the call and response. It it's just perfectly used. And when you get to that bridge, like the uh like my my uh my mom told me to leave you alone. My father said, Come on home. My doctor said, take it easy. Just like the breakdown of that moment is incredible. Yeah, this is a, an amazing song. Brooklyn. Uh yeah. Uh I would argue that Aretha Franklin should have changed her name for this song to Aretha Funklin because she puts the funk <laughs> in this song. Um, like it's All right, like you're on timeout. Okay, um, but yeah, that's so, an Andrew Bar just like, <laughs> just the just like the strut and the command that she has in this, the little like trill and the saxophone like in between every time Chain of Fools, um, the bass line in this like. I almost want to. I would love to hear her do do this song with Marvin Gaye, and just to see like what he would like, what he could bring, what what he could bring to the song in terms of like what he was do, what he was doing with Funk and Soul. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the most oomph I think I've ever I've ever heard in an in Aretha song. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, we're going to move on to number three hundred five, which is every breath you take. By the police. Um, yeah, this song's great. Uh, it's it's one of those iconic songs. I'm surprised it's here and not at a higher number uh, or lower, technically speaking. Um, but like, it's one of those like like you hear do 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 like that bass line, and it's you immediately know what song this is. Sting sounds incredible on it. The instrumentation is luscious and really great. The lyrics are really creepy, but it works kind of. Uh, Brooklyn. Um. So yeah, this is uh, uh, Andy Summers in general as guitarist. I think gets overlooked. I know from I know myself included, just because of Sting and Stuart Copeland and how talented they are in their own respects. But this is this is Andy Summers' best. Uh, this is Andy Summers' best guitar work. Um, a lot of a lot of guitarists will try to pick pick this song up, and uh, they re then they realize that this is this is actually quite hard. Um, fingers uh, fingers have quite a stretch, and when you, once you realize what he's doing in this, it's really cool. Um, I understand um, and get why like how these lyrics kind of come out come off as like cre creepy and intimidating. But like whenever I was going through a listen to it, and I, I was kind of going through the lyrics. And it's like every breath you take, every move you make, every smile, and I think it was the line of like every smile you fake. Kind of, it kind of took me for a turn on the song, where it's like, oh, maybe this person is just like not resentful, but is just, but is just like, I am still hurt by the things that you did, but I don't know how to let go go with you unless I'm just like keeping like kind of uh, like I'm just like I have an eye, have an eye on you like a hawk, and like. That does kind of, that does ultimately kind of come off as creepy, but there's a weird. You understand where he's coming from, and it's weird to say that. And Cody, sorry, I'm listening to it right now. Um, I love the song. I absolutely uh, adore the song as a thing, and I, I think I think what works so much is does the. Does how the song is built work? Yes, because I think like the beat works really well with it. I think you can flow with it, but the lyrics of the song are so strong. Like this man yeah. is basically how I always took the line of like every smile you fake is basically a person that is clearly out of like like she the person that he's in love with isn't out on him or somewhat like faking it through the relationship as much as possible, but he can't get away from it and he'll try to do whatever it takes to get her back. But like when he looks around it's a, and it's you that I can't replace, like that song, just like lo longing for somebody, even though you know it may be over, it's just like a heartbreaking song when you think about it. Um, but like, I think especially when it picks up and it goes like into it, but when it slows back down to the, 
I'll be missing you. It's it's a great song. I'm with you, Andrew. Like, it's surprisingly, I guess maybe Sting didn't pay off Rolling Stone the right amount of money. But I would have expected this to be, like, you know, in the 200s to 100. I think it's, like, one of those, like, especially of the 80s, it's, like, that's the yeah. one, this is one of the songs I think of automatically. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would think that most people would call it one of the greatest songs of the 80s. Uh, but moving on, we're going to move on to Kraftwerk's Trans Europe Express. Uh, Cody, you're a big Kraftwerk fan. Uh, so I'm going to save you for after me. Um, I I really like this. I dig this a lot. I totally understand that it's a niche, though. This is absolutely like a niche song. Um, I have a lot of respect for Kraftwerk. They're influence on the EDM genre, the electronic genre, um, how they're not into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yet. I'm kind of surprised considering they've been nominated multiple times. Um, but I really do dig this song a lot. It sets this great atmosphere. Uh, the synth tone is just interesting enough that I'm like kind of in, almost entranced by it. Um, but I think the thing that really helps is kind of that chugging motion that this song delivers and its instrumentation that kind of creates that train-like sound and experience. So it's a really interesting piece. I really dig it a lot, but I totally understand why people wouldn't. So, Cody, tell me why you don't. You want to go to the whiteboard and figure out if this is this song sucks. This is not this a Cody is, song. This song is garbage. What, is, what, is, what the world are we doing <laughs> Like, you like this, Brooklyn? Oh, my God. <laughs> like, I felt like I was like, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie, but it's called Euro Trip. And nope. you wandered in that wrong place in Germany, and you're about to get... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I felt some creepy-ass vibes in this movie. So I did not like it. I did not have fun with it. Um, it was also with the divorce song. It's, it's a, let, let's go. I listened to you once. I gave you a chance. You're not for me. No, thank you. This is this is exactly remember that Mike Myers Hotel character on California. SNL. California, Hotel California is three eleven. This is three oh four. Take a bullet <laughs> to the head. What are you doing? Here? What is it doing? Here? Uh, oh, Brooklyn, top that. It's a crime. I, but I fucking I love craftwork. Uh, Luca was the person that kind of made like kind of forced me to listen to them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Had one of their one of their albums, uh, and I was like, "Oh, these guys are fucking oh, it's just incredible." Uh, if you love if you love NES if you love NES games and you love the music behind those, you will really appreciate these guys. Uh, now, Dre, I said said in the past um, that like because I know Andrew was mentioning like e like EDM, EDM and electronic and dance as well. Uh, these guys are also huge influencers in hip hop, um, and these guys. Um, uh, do, um, I don't know. Yeah, Doctor Drake looks back on them for like for beat for beats and, sam and samples and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I it's the right sort of like instrumental music. I'm pr like after this sh after this show, I'm probably just I'm probably gonna throw this on and just walk around the house, um, or I might go outside might go outside for a second. Um, and yeah, it's probably gonna make this song a much <laughs> make us make this song a lot better. But it's just like it's like. Everything a little bit like Castlevania, and there's like even even there's even new games coming out that still that still kind of nod to this. It's just really cool storytelling with the technology that they were using. Uh, yeah, the Craftwork <laughs> number three hundred four. Uh, number three hundred three is going to be No Scrubs by TLC. Brooklyn, what are your thoughts on this? A scrub is a guy that thinks he's fly, but is also known as a buster. Um, I this is this is one of my favorite TLC riffs or T, TLC hooks. Um, I can listen to those strings on loop or whatever. Um, this is not my favorite. This is not my favorite TLC song. Um, if there's one, if there's one song that I could put on there, it is uh, something wicked this way comes. And I think Ooh, that's just it. Yeah. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. I was just saying, good choice. Go ahead. All right, all right, cool. I guess I'm going to go then. Um, so I really like this song. Um, I think that the thing that makes this song really work are the are TLC themselves, because the way that their voices blend together in this, it's just really magical. Um, that chorus, it's just that 
I mean, the, the lead into the chorus, she's like, no, I don't want your number, no. And then, like, the, it's just perfect. That melody and that hook is absolutely sticky and infectious. And the warm guitar that is sprinkled throughout the song, it's just absolutely a perfect piece that ties everything together. Cody. Oh, such a, such a banger. Like, I understand, like, this hits there, like, why it's why it's 303 and like this far down over some other stuff is a little weird for me but i know every word to the song like sits on his broke ass so no i don't know no. it really just set up a bad vibe too also in the playground because i'm like 90, 99 like i'm still going through like school and like kids call like girls call me a scrub and stuff which i didn't really understand because i i couldn't get a job at that point because i was <laughs> but like it set up a bad vibe right there but their voices work so well together like if it wasn't for like i think it's left eye i think left eye lopez is that the one that passed away yeah lisa left eye lopez yeah i think they could have went even longer with their group i think they were so good together like like waterfall all that stuff like um there's some great songs for it but this one is just like so catchy and really there's not much to it like, if you think about it, like, no, uh, and it keeps going. But, like, it could sit there for, like, eight minutes. And I'd, be, I'd still be, like, on the final time, like, no, I don't know. <laughs> no. So it just it just works. I have, yeah, I have a lot of vibe. Uh, the TLC, especially 99, that just brings you straight back. Like, I'm like, yeah. yeah. TLC is one of those bands that I just wish had, like, better luck behind them. But, unfortunately, yeah. fucked by the label. I mean, if they were pushed like Destiny's Child, like... Yeah. Uh, so, moving on to number 302, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. Um, I really like Pink Floyd. I like a lot of Pink Floyd stuff. Uh, especially the, uh, like, the 70s era with Roger Waters. Um, and this one is one that... I like, I respect, and I appreciate a lot. I'm glad that it's here. I think it deserves to be on the list. It's just there's something that doesn't quite grab me the way that some other songs on this list have. So I really like it. I think it deserves this spot. But for me personally, it's one that I would skip in Pink Floyd's discography. Brooklyn. Sorry, I'm a little frozen, so I'm not sure if you guys try to talk. Yeah, you, no, you're Brooklyn and we're on to you. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, okay, yeah, so, no, sorry. It's, it's cutting up, cut, cut up here on my end. Um, so, yeah, if you like Wonderwall and you wanted the song before everybody played Wonderwall, this was the song. Every guitar player knows this knows this riff and knows the knows the chord progression. Um, I personally love whenever they, uh, whenever they have that lone – Loan the guitar come in um, the, the, the second time around. It just adds that adds that that kind of feel for this. Um, also, I think everybody just kind of, it's it's a weird part to kind of like to kind of come in, kind of join in unison for a song. But everybody knows the lines. We're just two lost souls swimming in a fishbowl year after year. But it's like it, it's like two thirds. It's like a two thirds into the song. It's not like a bridge. It's not like a, it's not like a special verse or whatever. It's just a random line. I think it's just a lot of people are like, "Ha, ah, it's kind of kind of cool." And Cody. Oh, all right. Sorry, I was listening to a song. Um, no, Pink Floyd. Um, I'm not the biggest Pink Floyd fan. Like, I, I I shouldn't say I'm not a biggest fan. I guess I just don't visit their like discography often at all. Like, I the songs I know of Pink Floyd, I know, but like, do I ever like dive in? Like, yeah, like this is my stuff. It's not that. I really enjoyed the song. Um, I probably have heard it before this, but like, I never actually like sat down and actually paid attention to it for like judging purposes. So I actually enjoyed it a lot more. Do I think it's 302 all the other songs? I would put some stuff a little bit lower on it. But maybe Pink Floyd, uh, there's probably songs that Pink Floyd has that you play. I'm like, oh, like that. that's a song. But they don't register with me. So and I'm fine with that. But um, 302 is a little bit, a little bit maybe too high. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Like, I want to see money on this list. If money doesn't appear on this list, I'm going to be a little upset. But finally, our last song of the episode is Night Moves by Bob Seger. 
Uh, I'm going to let Brooklyn go first, just for safety's sake. Uh, yeah, um, I used to not be a big fan of Bob Seger because I associated him with a person that I hated quite a bit. Um, and then I kind of grew on this song. And I think what attach I think what attaches me to this song is it's like near the end whenever they're kind of going through like they kind of went through the main part, but then it's just it's just back to him. Um, and it's like that kind of how he fades off into like strange how the night moves, and it's just that one guitar. And then, like you hear these, you hear like the piano come in, and then everybody else kind of kind of kicks back in. But it's just like if you like Bob Se- if you like Bob Seger, and you like dad rock, it, like this is, I think this is like S tier dad rock. Um, okay, I might give you that. I, I was thrown off a little bit, but I might give you that. I love this song because I think that there's a lot of songs that try to catch like the wistfulness remembrance of your youth. And I think this is the best song to do it. Uh, just the instrumentation, his uh, Bob Seger's delivery on this song in particular, where like the dynamics really create this, like this landscape of his memories um, and the choir that comes in with him. It's just the ease of the vocals between the two of them. It just creates this beautiful sound in this great luscious like world that he's bringing you into this is a yeah this is a fantastic song uh brooklyn is this a cody song all right well i'm gonna say that it is a cody song (laughs) sorry brooklyn cody is this my song brooklyn would you say this is a song that i would like this is a cody song Well, Cody, I think it's just going to be. Oh, there we go. Yeah, um, yeah this is dad. this is dad rock. I'm now a dad. Like now, like this is a, this is I. I now you I, understand. I do. I think I had more fun in this song driving this past week than I had ever listening to it before. Um, one, I think mountains better than old time rock and roll. Like I understand old time rock and roll has its place and does its thing. This is like a soulful like song where he's just like letting it go. Um and I love the beat to it. Like again, there's other Bob Seeker songs that are all really good too. I I don't know if this is the only one. If this is the only one it's kind of weird for me, but whatever. Um but like I finally understand it. I finally understand my uncle. I finally understand other people like telling me about like Seeger and like where he like ranks into their looks. Like you don't understand Seeger. Like like it's an old guy like saying no i get it now there's that step of like it's finally turning turn the turning of the page i'm finally i'm finally yeah. getting it it's 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 there i'm i'm on board i had so much fun even when you guys were talking about like uh pink floyd i was listening to my night moves before <laughs> i just i'm so i'm so in i'm in on this song i don't know if it deserves you- higher but like i'm fully i'm there now Go. Go. Brooklyn, go. 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 Okay. Um, yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> are you trying are, are you trying to say, Cody, that you turned the page with uh, with Bob Seeger? Yes, yes I did. I turned the page. That's the All only right. other song of Bob Seeger's that I think should be in this top five hundred list. I'm kinda sad that it's that it's not that it's not here, purely for the sax solo. Yeah, uh, I think I think that's the song that ranks higher than the rest. Um turn the page. I think that's just because that's like real soulful song, like that that has some heart behind it that you just like basically yeah. ending of a chapter. But sorry, go ahead. No, no, it's fine. Uh, that's a top five seeker song for me as well. Um, but with that, we've reached the end of this section of the list. Uh, I'm going to ask our panel. They can only pick one, one song only that they can immediately put into the top 100, and we're going to start with Brooklyn. I mean, Hotel California is the obvious pick, but if I couldn't pick Hotel California, I would actually put... No, nope, you Canada. get one song, sir. You get one song. What song did you pick? Hotel California. Hotel California. What but was if the you other one? Look, yeah, what was, what was the, the other, other one? one? Being, being a dick. Oh, the other one uh, was Hound Dog, if I couldn't pick Hotel California. Mm. Mm. Cody. Um... It's just like cheating because he picked Hotel California, so I don't have to pick Hotel California. Sure, um, yeah. 
I'll do that. Um, I would honestly probably put. Um, I'd probably put night moves. I won't be real honest with you. Wow. Like scenes from Italian restaurant and stuff like that. I know Billy Joel's not here anymore, but like, like his other music is fine. I just night moves hit something different in this this listening, and I'm 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 all on board. So, uh, yeah. honestly, I was also gonna pick night moves. Um, so I'm gonna cheat. Uh, since you picked night moves, I'm gonna pick Tears of a Clown. I think the Tears of a Clown is a great. great that was my song. second choice. See, we agree sometimes, Cody. It's yeah, rare, but it happens. You're not always a hack. It, yeah. Uh, I'm just 95% of the time a hack. Um, but with that being said, Cody, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, for those of you watching, uh, if you don't know, Cody hosts a show called Your List Sucks. Uh, it's a great show. Brooklyn and I have been on multiple times. We wouldn't come on if we didn't love being on that show. Um, so go watch that. Uh, you're starting up again the first Wednesday of February, correct? Yeah, first Wednesday of February, best 2021 movies. So, yep. Great. All right. But with that being said, uh, Brooklyn, we did it. Uh, we did got through another episode somehow. Uh, so for Brooklyn, for Cody, and for myself, uh, keep on rocking, guys.